This morning, um, these, these lucky guys get to be with me all three services. So I think I might be more nervous than you guys are. Uh, we're, and we're, it's great to have Kelly Grunwald with us. She is our assistant in confirmation for the last five years. She has assisted um, uh, myself in the confirmation class every Tuesday at 4 o'clock. And Kelly, we appreciate what you have done um, to be with these kids and plan some fun events. So we're going to talk about the three different individuals in the story today. So why don't you guys stand up? You can put the hymn book down for a second, or on your clip, and grab your grab your microphones. And um, we're going to first talk about the younger son in this service. The next service we'll talk about the father, and the last service we'll talk about the older brother. And, no, not this one. You're good. This one. I got the object lesson of this one. And this is the envelope. And I want you, um, Joey, why don't you open this envelope? Okay. Joey's like the younger son, and um, he asked for his, his inheritance today. Wouldn't that be cool if we could ask for our inheritance today from our families? Wouldn't that be awesome? That's, uh, um, so here we are. Let's say you guys are the two brothers here. All right? So divide up among you um, the money. How much do we have there, Joey? That's easy. Give them two 20s and give them the 10. Okay, 50, right. you, you kept the 50, though. Well, is that pretty attractive? That's pretty attractive, though, the 50. Huh? Grab your mic for a second, if you would, and uh, we can throw that envelope. So the younger, the older son right now, you'll play Austin as the older, and so you're the younger son. And um, what's attractive, Joey, having that $50 bill in front of you right now? Well... Only having one dollar bill, not having all of them to keep track of. Fifty, yeah, having fifty ones is great to have fifty. And so the younger son says, "Hey, you know what? I want my money now, not after Dad passes away. I want it now because I want to hit the road. What can you do with fifty dollars today?" Probably. Mm. How quick? How quick will that fifty dollars go? Will it, will it take you at? A well, day, a week, a couple weeks, a month? Probably a month because there's like a... A month. That's pretty good. How many of you would, would spend the 50 today? All right. Yeah. <laughs> there's 50 in my... It's burning in my pocket. You got a dollar man. I got a... <laughs> but this is what the younger son... He, he was selfish and he wanted it now. And he, wanted, he wasn't thinking about the future. And yeah. so he wanted to just go and spend it today. Now... Because in your future, your dad might make even more money. So well, works. there you go. Joey said it really well. For the older son, staying with dad, he goes, I'm going to have dad keep the money. All right. I'm gonna, you're going to stick with me. And, um, and that money can multiply. You know, if you stick with me. But, boy, if you take off, Joey, with the $50, you're not with us. What's going to happen when that 50 goes? You'll live in a cardboard box or you'll be feeding with pigs, as we see in this story. And so today, the first lesson we celebrate the gospel of Jesus Christ is that sticking with him, it's continuous blessings that he showers upon us that we hear in the Bible and the Christian church, and it continues to grow the blessings. Once we leave God and we don't study his word or devotional time, the tank will run dry. And we're going to find out, thank the Lord that the tank ran dry and he knew where to turn to in the next service. But today, the first service, we want to encourage you that God has incredible blessings for you. And there'll be temptations for you to leave the Christian church. So if you, you know, in high school, you got things to do. If you go to the military or college or trade school or just get a job in this area, the weekends are going to be more valuable for you. No mom and dad to wake you up in the morning on Sunday morning or get you to class on Tuesday afternoon. It'll be tempting to say, ah, I think I'm okay. But little by little, all of a sudden those blessings of God, not being connected with God, will start to fade away. And then you're, where's that peace? You know, where's that joy? Because that world out there is pretty tough. And God doesn't only bless us with finance, but also with the incredible church family um, that we saw yesterday. And you see an anchor over here. One of our members, John Rikita, was a, a captain of a tugboat. So he brought in big ships into the harbor in Florida and California. And he went to heaven. And his anchor was Jesus. And that's our, your, your dream and your goal is to have Jesus as your anchor in your journey in life. 
And so when you get selfish, remember, just as your parents have all the goods, <laughs> they got a house, a shelter, uh, and we want things now, let's f ask God's forgiveness of being selfish and enjoy what he's given us because they'll take good care of you and get you ready to train you to be out in the world in Jesus' name. It's Amen. a great story. And today we, um, we're divi dividing the message into three parts. So these guys are with me, all three services, to share with the congregation their faith. As we call it an altar call, this is now your guys' faith. We talked about the, older, the younger son in the first service, and the prop was, what was the prop, guys? Money. Money. And so we had money up here, and, um, and they, could, um, they had a choice. They could stay with Dad, or they could take the money and run. And so the younger son ran. And, um, but how far does money travel? Not very far at all. And so he, when he loses money, he lost everything. And so now he has, to, he has no money left from his dad. So what does he have to do next? Well, not yet. Pride sends in. I'm not going to go back to dad. So how else do you get money? Get a job. Say it again. Get a job. Get a job. So um, what kind of job can you guys get right now in your life? What kind of job? Any type of one. <laughs> All right. She's ready. Very good. Yeah. But the only, there was a tough time in the land, so there wasn't any jobs offering. And so he started to do, he had to work with the pigs, and, but there wasn't much money in it, so what, what kind of food did he eat? The pig's food he'd eat. Can you imagine? That was so, and today it would be like eating our pet food, probably. So that would be, so he came to his senses. He realized that what, what was better, on your own or home? Home. But he also knew that out of his pride and humbleness, he decided that, you know, I'm no longer worthy to become a son. So what's the next thing coming home? What's the next best thing if you can't be a son? Servant. Would your mom and dad love to have a servant at their house? <laughs> Wouldn't we all love to have servants in our house? On the yard work. You know your folks would love that, right? What would your folks love you to do around the house without asking? Um, yeah. <laughs> what was that? Everything. Everything. That's right, man. Everything, Austin. And so the younger son decided, you know what? I'm no longer become a son, so I guess the best part is I can be a servant. So think of um, what would be the worst job to do at your house? Pick up what kind of? Dog poop. Dog poop. I heard that turtle. Is turtle poop pretty tough? They have a number of animals in they there. Eat dog poop and then just like so that's dog not. Poop. They eat. Oh, they eat other people's poop and poop that out. Okay, that's. Hey, we have Sunday school class here, so let's um, keep it clean. That's, okay, what? What would be one of the worst chores for you, Austin? Dog poop. Dog, okay, picking up, and so they were willing to do that. And this is what we have confession is all about, is realizing I'm not worthy to be a part of God's family. And so to humble ourselves so low that, Lord, even our folks, and we hurt somebody, to be their servants. But you know what's cool about God, the father, Austin, who's the dad, is what was he doing while his son was away? What did he do every day? Would you... um? Put that, hold that to your eyes and look around the room. And that's what every day, like any parent does, maybe not with binoculars, but in their hearts and minds are waiting. Waiting for their loved ones. You could say stalking in love. <laughs> waiting, waiting for them to return. Humble. It's not about the money. It's not about things. But it's about a greater family. Being a part of the family, the, proud, the father couldn't wait to have his son back. And so I want to encourage you. In fact, let me challenge you guys today. How many of you took a break from church in your journey? Raise your hand if you had. Take a break. Look at this. This is cool. 
You look at all these hands that have taken a break from church, whether a Sunday, a month, a couple of years, whatever it might be, even from God's Word. But did God, did He say, you can't come back? No. He says the light is always on on the porch. No matter what time of day it is, no matter what you've been through, is that the church always welcomes you. I heard a funny story yesterday about a friend. I was coming with one of you to church. I think it was on Easter. And apparently this friend hasn't come to church for a long time or a short period. And it was cute because before he came in here, he goes, you guys stay here. I'll go in first to make sure nothing happens. Like, you know, lightning's going to hit because you haven't been to the church. He had a great sense of humor. And that's the encourage is that you're always welcome back to church. No matter what journey you take on, is that the Heavenly Father loves you guys so much. And that's where the love you get from your parents. They get upset with you, you know, at times. You know, because we're, not, we're like the prodigal son with our homework, with our chores, with respect with each other. But they love you, and they forgive you, and they help you. And that's what we celebrate with the loving Father today, that He's always looking, always waiting for us to come back to the Bible and to the Christian family. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, we divided the message into three parts today, and so we started in the first service. 8 a.m. these guys were with me and with their families to be with us, and we talked about... We wanted the money. Joey wanted the money, and so he got the inheritance. And then what happens when we have money in our fingers? It's gone. And then he realized that he was in trouble, and so he tried to get a job. There was severe famine, and so there was no work. And so the only work was at your farm. And um, he has, he has a, Joey has a bunch of animals um, and where he lives, which is awesome. And then, and then we, we celebrate in the second service of the Father. And that um, there's no place like home. And that's, you can always go back home. And how many of you, we asked this in the last service, how many of you straight away from the, I'm sorry, straight away from the church uh, for a month, a year, a couple years? How many, yeah, look at you guys. And so straight away, and, um, and but, as we found out in the last service, that it's a great that God says, come. Anytime, the light is always here in the Christian church and in the Bible. But now we're going to talk about the older son today. And so, Joey's dad, would you help me? Would you get that, that robe, Mark? Would you, um, you have that robe over here, is that right? In the, in the other tool. Let's, this is, um, yeah, let's get that hat. Cool, let's get that hat. And um, put the hat on the younger son. It's Austin's birthday this week, so he's got a big celebration uh, with his family next week. So the younger son comes home. And, um, and so it's really cool is that Joey, the younger son, we talked about in the last service, is that he humbled himself so much. He goes, I'm not worthy to be a son, so I'll be a servant. And so this was, let's bring up both of them. This is cool. This is, um, so Joey says that I... Put that, you put that robe on him, Dad. That's awesome. And this is his camouflage robe. Isn't that cool? Mike Floyd, isn't that, that's perfect, isn't it? We got to get one for you. That's a, that is cool. That's a, and this is, this is, um, the younger son says, I will, um, I will be no longer a son, but a servant. And this is a, I can't say it in church, can I? A pooper scooper. All right. So that's, but we'll, that's, we'll put that. And that's what's kind of cool is that we celebrate. We celebrate that you can know God, you'll always be a child of God in the celebration. But now we want to talk about, you're going to be the older son now, Austin. You've been working hard. And now he gets a party. And this is what we do as Christians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as we do as Christians is that, we like to keep score. And here it is. Grab the clipboard here. And it's easy for us to say, hey, that's not fair. I have on record here that I've been with you this entire time, Dad. This guy squandered all your money. Keep pointing the clipboard, Austin. You keep pointing. 
Oh, and you're, and don't, no smile, man, you're upset, all right? It's not fair that he gets a party and you never had a party for my friends. And this is as Christians, this is what we do, is that those of us, and many of you, have been in with this Trinity for a long time, and, um, and we take advantage of you. We know you're coming. We know you're going to be here. Um, we had a, one of our great warriors of the faith, John Rikita, that was here all the time. And now he went to heaven. And I think part of my tears and so on over the last week or so having John go to heaven is that I just knew he was going to be here. I took advantage of him. You know, I knew. I, I took him for granted. And, you know, and he was loyal. And a lot of times we do that to each other is that life's not fair. How come God is blessing him and not me? Well, it says in the reading that he refused to go to the party. He still could have gone. Yeah, well, use your mic. Say that again. It says in the story that he refused to go, to the par to go in when he still could have gone. Yeah, he could have celebrated, but he was just a sinner as the younger guy and his brother because of his sinful state. He was sinful because he wanted to spend everything now and just instant pleasure, da-da-da-da. This guy was keeping score. And we find out in 1 Corinthians 13 that love doesn't keep score. Doesn't keep records of wrong. And that's what's neat about our Heavenly Father and the love that he's given us is that we should always be excited when someone comes back to the church and celebrates. John Rikita, a pretty powerful story, is that his family kind of broke away from Trinity years and went to another church until his oldest son, Joseph, passed away about the time I came, and they needed a place for the service. And they came, and they asked, and boy, when John and Judy came back here for the resurrection service, they got to see old friends, the Vosses, the um, Thelakis, and many others that were here back in the 80s. And this is back in 2004. And that's the only family that came back to church after a funeral or a wedding because it's like they never left, they said. And that's what the Christian church is all about, is that the father is so happy. He goes, son, he told the older son, everything I have is yours. But today we get excited because he was lost, but now he's found, he's safe. Because what Jesus Christ has done for us. We have one of the flowers in the corner there. You see the anchor. John Rikita was a captain of tugboats bringing big ships into harbor in Florida and California. And they let us keep that anchor today to celebrate with you two is that let Jesus always be your anchor. This is the only the beginning of your faith now. The parents have passed the baton of faith to you guys and now it's your responsibility to get up yourself to come to church uh, and do activities and youth and encourage, be respectful to your parents, love them, support them. And then wherever you live, and we're, we're grateful that you live in this area to be part of Trinity and to help us to go out and seek the loss in Jesus' name. Amen.